go as slow as shadow on the mic I play to win, never to lose In the contest of champions I'm the one that shoes Swipe straight down, my moves are slick Dexterity more heavily, I dodge quick Class champ, I'm the master of the game Cosmic science, skill tech mutant I claim Arena and chill grind, that's how I roll No stress, no drama, just on patrol The fight, I'm swift, my tactics excite Lost shadows in the arena, ready to ignite From the streets to the screen, my skills are renowned in the world of Marvel, I'm the King Crown. So listen up, here's the story of the champ, Lord Shadow's the name. I'm the Grime Track fan. Hey everyone, Shadow here, and welcome to another Marvel Contest of Champions video. So we're going into the fourth quest of Act 9. That is um, Act 9.1.4. And you can see the team that I'm going in with. I've already scouted it out, and I know what path I want to choose, and it is the path that starts with Nebula. And we'll take a brief look at the nodes and then I'll tell you uh, my strategy here. So there you go. The one that really catches my eye is the Mixmaster. But Cosmic Horror, if you'll see, uh, will allow you to use pretty much any Cosmic True Lies. Now that right there, I have something to say about that one. Okay, so what I thought was, why don't I bring in Corvus with Proxima Midnight Synergy? If you're unfamiliar with that, whenever they evade or auto block, if you knock them down with a heavy or a special, after they do that, your true damage becomes true strike. And then they can't evade or auto block anymore. Now, I was nervous because I wasn't sure whether that node would cancel his true strike because the node, the uh, cosmic horror, allows any cosmic when they are equipped with a striker to put a panic debuff, so a new one, so that they can't evade um, I don't know if it does auto block, but they can't evade. So I'm like, I hope this works. So you don't have to use any of that. You could do this, medium, light, medium. Okay, you see how she evaded? And then bam, now I have true strike. Or so I thought. Okay, so I'm like, what just happened? And look at that, she's still evading. So let me tell you what's happening here. Look at this, just evading. Um, here's what happened. My true strike buff, as you can see, is not there. That's what the node did. It made it so that my true strike buff would have minus 100% ability accuracy. I don't remember what um corvus has for his ability accuracy but that's what the node did so i'm sitting here now and i'm like wait a minute is this gonna work i don't know so i say let me try it again so the node is preventing my true strike from activating but i don't know if it's gonna do that all the time so let's try it again okay so i'm doing medium light medium all right, and look at that. What do you know? You see what happened? I don't know if y'all understand. So, in the last fight, the node stopped my true strike from popping up, which it would have done in the fight. But here, <clears throat> I am starting the fight with the true strike up before the node activated. So what that means is that Corvus is going to work and I'm going to have some fun. All right. So Corvus with the Proxima um, Synergy works just fine. All right. Um, you can also use pretty much any Cosmic that is equipped with a Striker. Okay. But you see my True Strike up now? Look at that. Evade failed. Because... I start the fight with it 
before the ability accuracy kicks in and prevents it. So look at this. Once I saw that, it was on. All right. So this path is the easy path. And I had a lot of fun. Look at the damage. Corvus used to be my favorite before Hercules came. But the health pools got higher and so forth. But now, Corvus is here as a 7 star. And I took mine to rank 3. And I want you all to notice something. All while I'm playing this, his immortality is not playing a factor. You can do this with an awakened, I mean an unawakened, Corvus. Doesn't matter. Um, the fight might take a little bit longer, but you can do it. All right? But once you have that true strike up, you're good. Now, I don't know how that node interacts with uh, other champions that get true strike and all that. Don't know. Um, but since Corvus worked, I don't have to use my, my other guys. Because, I mean, look at it. He is just tearing stuff up. Now, if you've been watching the um, previous videos in this series, you'll remember that I said the health pools are inflated here. They're much higher than they are in Act 7 and 8. Look at the fight speed. Under a minute. Now, I have watched folks do these um, paths and they complain about the health pool, okay? But as you see, if you choose the right counter, you're good. Now here, I went in with Gladiator because I was facing a Magneto. And Gladiator is not metal, okay? And I don't have a true strike, so, as you can see, I'm playing it a little bit slow. Okay. And we're going to hit one, two, bam. Okay. We're alternating so the Mix Master doesn't come into play. One, two, bam. All right. This fight will take a little bit longer. All right. Now, here we go. I do my striker. Now I have the panic on them. Okay. And look. He did an unstoppable. Cool, cool. And you see the panic is still up there. Bam. All right. Look at this. Bam, bam, bam. The other thing that I need to uh, point out is that when you do a heavy, similar to the last uh, video, that path where the heavy refreshes, that's what it's doing here. In the other one, the heavy refreshed your armor break. Here, it's refreshing that panic. So Gladiator is perfect because you can basically get free heavies in. Look at that, just just lovely. Okay, don't wanna throw him, uh, you know, I don't wanna get him to a special three. All right, there we go. Look at this, bam, boom, boom. Skadooshie, whoo, that pissed him off. He got mad, look at that, boom. Just look at that. So if you have Gladiator, you might want to bring him in. Let's see how long that fight um, took. I think it was a little longer than the Corvus uh, fights that we've had. Yeah, it's about a minute longer, but still not that bad. So now we go back to Corvus. My boy. All right, parry, and I could go just do five hit combos, but I'm just used to doing medium light medium. I'll also hit into the block because I can crit into the block and do damage. Okay, so I'm baiting this out. Of course, he waited long enough for certain things to expire, but that's fine. And see, with Corvus, I don't really want to do a um, heavy attack to refresh. I don't need to. Okay. And then here we go. Boom, boom. Look at all that. Oh, 
can y'all stop with that one percent thing? They they ain't no reason that my special should have left him on one percent, except some shenanigans. Just saying. Anyway, so as you can see, very very easy path with Corvus and Gladiator. But I had some others. I brought in Odin for the uh, pre-fights. That helped. And in case I needed him, I also brought in uh, Beta Ray Bill. But you could bring in, like I said, any, um, any cosmic. Now, this boss, a lot of people consider this boss the hardest boss of 9.1. But I'm going in there on the easy path completion and I'm going into that boss because she can be cheesed with void okay that aggression regeneration remember that aggression regeneration when you see something like that unless there's another node that prevents it you can cheese it with champions that can do heal reversals okay now I want y'all to watch this fight, okay? Because hopefully I will keep you from making a mistake. Now, my void is not awakened. He can do this unawakened, but it's not the same as if he's awakened. Awakened is so much easier. Anytime I looked at... Um, folks doing this with uh, Void, it was with him awakened. Had I known what I know now, I would have gone in with my six star awakened Void rather than this seven star unawakened. Let me explain why. I want y'all to watch. Do you see how the heal is going? Look at the debuffs on her. All right. We got two petrifies and we almost have six all right, now we have six of his debuffs. Keep an eye on them. Boom. Where'd they go? Look at her health. She just went right back up to full. When that happened, I was like, what in the world just happened? This did not happen on any of the um, videos that I saw. So I'm sitting here like, is that a bug? Is this, is this, you know, I, I just didn't understand. And so I went ahead and just, you know, got taken out. All right. Now, I am going to skip to the final fight, okay? Because there was a good 10 minutes of me trying to figure this out. Restarting the game, asking in chat what's going on, recording the fight. Um, letting people see it, trying to figure out what happened and why it's not working. And I'm going to impart some wisdom to you. So Void, when he is unawakened, does not get fear of the Void. That's what I thought was the big difference. Okay? But there's a something that I forgot or didn't realize. And I looked up on his kit. When he gets six of those debuffs he will remove those now if he's awakened he'll replace it with fear of the void if he's not awakened they just go away so here's the thing i don't have any control over what debuffs go on so when i was hitting her with a special one it was putting a random debuff on um speeding it up to the six so that it would then disappear. So if you have a void unawakened, all you want to do is parry. Look at this fight here. And I'm just relying on RNG because that's what it is. So you see, I got lucky and I got two um, petrifies, okay? And one of the other. And you see, all I'm doing is parrying, parrying. That's it. Look at this. Look at her health going. Parrying. And I have uh, four now. Parrying. All right. Parry some more. Look at her health. Look at this. Parry. 
Parry. I almost have six. All right, parry. Boom, got her down. Okay, so that was the key that I missed. If you have a void that is unawakened, you can do this fight, but it's going to rely on RNG. Because if you do that same thing that I just did, you don't control what order those debuffs come in. So you may get two petrifies right up front and then everything works smoothly. But if you get the two petrifies at the end, it's not going to work out well because they're going to disappear. So my advice, go in here with an awakened void and save yourself that RNG because with him awakened, all you got to do is parry and it doesn't matter what order they come in. Just parry your way to the victory. Easy. Okay. Anyway, that is going to do it guys for this video. Take care. Hit the like button. If you enjoyed it, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about this video. Hopefully this will help you with that boss and make that boss the easiest boss that you can encounter rather than the hardest. All right, so take care and you all have a blessed day. Arena and chill grind, that's how we roll. No stress, no drama, just on patrol. In the fight, he swift. His tactics be tight. Those shadows in the arena ready to ignite. From the streets to the screen, his skills be renowned in the world of Marvel, Lord, the King Crown.